Good morning. So I wanted to kind of tell people a little more about my life and uh, kind of what drew me away from societal norms. Um, and uh, it wasn't it wasn't really from any any. I didn't get guided away by you know uh, any group or any guru or any you know kind of teachings because I was I was really um, against the Bible growing up, so I never used that to to separate from the pathological society. I ended up using um, my anger towards like my school and towards how I was treated in life and uh, as you know what I'm screw all these people I'm going to do it myself right and uh, I've became super independent because of this reason I was an intense child you know um, the uh, in school they were throwing me out all the time into the hallway because I was always questioning the teacher and talking and just it wasn't built for a school you know um, and and so they because of that like they didn't want me disturbing uh, classes and stuff, so they put me in a class called Strategies, and uh, as I went from school to school, uh, there was one school I had to go into the, uh, like, handicap bus to school every day, and so I uh, had to learn to defend myself because uh, I was bullied because I was called, like, a, you know, retard and all these really nice names and stuff, so I, you know, I, and I, I had already started to taking karate and stuff like that, so I learned to defend myself and I kind of learned to like fighting. And, you know, I, uh, you know, beat a few kids up in grade four, five, six, seven, kind of wherever I had to. Maybe I stopped, uh, I stopped probably when, uh, around about age nine, or, uh, sorry, grade nine, when, uh, people started getting, uh, you know, at the, at the high school, there was a lot bigger kids than me, and, uh, so I probably got a little more timid and just hid away at that point. But, um, you know, it, they put me on uh, Ritalin and Dexedrine and I remember like pretending to take it and cheeking it and spitting it out and you know sometimes they would get me to take it but most of the time I was just refusing to take it and I kind of thank my my little uh, spirit I had back in grade you know four and five is that was when I started like spitting out the pill and stuff because I think that saved me from uh, a, because they were giving me a drug to program me right so you know and, and uh, yeah, I, w I was angry at the world from, like, not being accepted, and, and my only friends were kind of, uh, besides my best friend Shane, were kind of uh, outsiders in a sense, so, um, you know, we, we kind of were all kind of resentful at the the in-crowd and society, you know, societal norms and stuff like that, and, um, <clears throat> so as I grew up, you know, I, like, I was started right away, cannabis was really important in my life, music, so, you know, I, I uh, because of that, you know, I became quite a hippie when I was, uh, you know, my mother died when I was 14, I fished till I was 18, became a hippie and went traveling from 18 on till, you know, about, I guess probably 26 or 27, so I was, you know, living on the road and stuff like that, and kind of just forgetting about all my, uh, my issues, I guess, and uh, when I got back, I, like, put my head down, and, and I did it for myself, and I did it, you know, uh, you know, I, I, when in my hippie days, you know, I was quite a womanizer, and so those were, like, kind of my dark shadow was, is I wasn't in control of that dragon, you know, so these are kind of the things that I'm, I, I've repented, and I've, uh, I'm living the redemption now for those, uh, those, you know, sexual immoral kind of uh, ways because I, I, I have to say I hid my I used my hippie appeal to, to be kind of a predator in uh, in the um, in the sex game right it's like it's like a, using a false virtue you know in a sense and, and, and I wasn't really that until later you know so anyways so you know that's that's uh, one thing I I've had questionable, and it also mixed with drinking and stuff like that. That's when uh, my morality slipped with uh, around sexuality, you know. So, but what I can say about myself is that I did it myself, right? And I, and that's why I can thank, I can thank all the people 
in my life that hated on me and, and made me tough, made me the warrior I am, you know, because, uh, and, you know, I, I was a lion for almost my entire life and, and uh, most people are, uh, are camels for their entire lives, right? And now I, I can feel that I'm moving more into the child position and, uh, what I mean by that is Nietzsche believes there's like three stages to life, child, camel, lion, child, camel, lion, it goes like that, you know, um, and you know, that you come into this world as a child, like absorbing and believing everything, and then it usually turns you into a camel, and then you get resentful for carrying all this stuff and not getting anything for it, so then you become a lion against um, the uh, co compliance, and then after you realize this, you're you're being a lion, you're being ideological on the other side, then you become a child, you know, it starts to be more centered, you know, so, <clears throat> so thank, thank the, the medical establishment for their pathetic attempt to, to, uh, you know, brainwash me and, and to anger me to the point where I turned a lion early because, because of that, I am, I'm not as, uh, let's say, domesticated as the average person and uh, because of that I come off people don't really understand you know how I how I am and that's that's fine also like I, uh, I'd rather um, and the, the people that have the higher moral teachings and re the, are into the same kind of things as me like Jung and, and you know religious and mythical uh, teachings you know the um, they do understand what I'm saying, so I, I see where, kind of like I said, the Tower of Bob, Babel has been falling, and, you know, and I was hard on myself in my life, and that's why I turned to drinking and, uh, and uh, smoking cannabis, you know, like, I still smoke cannabis, but I, my intent is way different than it used to be, and my, I, my intent in the past was to use cannabis to hide, and, uh, yeah, I just, uh, that's not, uh, that's not how I use it, you know, so I, I guess I can, could it be occasionally using it like that sometimes now. However, I, I've been, I've been criticized my whole life about cannabis, but I was passionate about it ever since I, it, I smoked it the first time. You know, it, I started to experience music more, I started to write, I started to be attached to something, you know, and uh, it gave me a, a let's say, some, some meaning in my life after, you know, my mother's death, you know, for the first time, music and cannabis gave me meaning, right? So I was like, who do, am I going to listen to all these people that, I, that have been saying I'm pathological my whole life, or should I listen to this plant that's teaching me something very different, you know? And as I went along, I became much more evolved, and I, I developed enclosing spondylitis, and I learned about CBD, and started, to, I, everything I put my mind into I, I I try to master so I push to the very max and that's why pro producing music I, I uh, put all my mind into learning all the ins and outs to doing that with cannabis I put all, all my ins and outs to growing and, uh, and extracting you know, and I still can't, can't wait to learn more right so this is that's passion and, uh, so now I look and how the world's changing and how all these people that were bowing down to their pharmaceutical god are changing their appeal and I realize, hmm, what kind of programming are they giving us, right? Well, you may not like me, but that's fine. I hope you can at least respect what I am doing. And if you feel uncomfortable about, about cannabis and about people's use of it, maybe you should give it a try and see what you what you're hiding from around that plant, right? And you know, uh, I look at myself now and I'm amazed at how much I hold myself accountable and how I handle things and what I am. So I had to go through all the shit and the suffering and. I see the people around me that are pathologizing me and what do they have? A lot of them, some of them have stuff, but what do, do they have the virtues that I have? Not many of them, no. You know, they might have really good minds, you know, and 
really cool things to say, but how have they contributed? That's a question you should ask, right? And, you know, that's what we should say, because, you know, I believe great people are pushed down because of envy and jealousy. So, I think I'm a great person, and I want to be greater, and I'm pushing for that. And I will push for that always. This has been an oath, and I'm keeping this oath. I took an oath to truth years ago, and it's led me to amazing places. So why would I stop? It's led me to absolute hell. But I came back 